Good morning. In the book of Timothy, we are told that godliness uh, is a blessing in this life and in the life to come. Godliness. Physical exercise profits us, and we must look after this temple that is our, our body. We are not our body. We live in a body. And also Jesus Christ lives with us in that body. And the Holy Spirit inhabits our body. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are not old when you grow old. Your body is old. You are never old. You live forever. Now godliness, it tells us, is a, uh, a blessing for this life and for the life to come. There is a life to come prior to the fulfillment of a new heaven and a new earth. And there is an intervening period of time that the Bible talks about. Uh, as a millennium time, a thousand years before the, uh, the new heaven and the new earth, and also uh, a rapture time when the church gets taken up into, the, into heaven, but not to undergo some of the judgments of this world. Now, <coughs> godliness includes honoring your father and mother, honoring your grandparents, it tells us there in the same book of Timothy, 1 Timothy, and uh, and having godly habits, character, and the healing of the character of a man. Now healing comes to us in many ways, physical, mental, emotional, social, financial, all sorts of healings. When you have something wrong in your life, it, it's not just a, a, a once, uh, just a, a physical wrong, it can be spiritual wrong, it can be attitudes that are wrong. Remember? The Beatitudes. The Beatitudes were to do with attitudes, and Jesus always uh, focused on attitudes. Uh, many people focus on being born again, but in actual fact, born again is just a changing of your attitude so that you can become a new creature in Christ when the Holy Spirit inhabits you. Okay, Born again was spoken of once by Jesus Christ, but attitudes and responses and, and acts in life, uh, I mean, issues of life, and the way you react to them. These were focused upon by Jesus consistently throughout the whole four Gospels. And uh, he, he insisted that we change our attitudes and change our lives. Now, godliness is a lifestyle. So many people in the Western world have thrown away honoring father and mother and honoring family. But it tells us in, in the book of Timothy and Titus that unless you can manage your family well, you cannot manage the, the kingdom of heaven families. God is based upon families. His, his heaven is a family. He and the Son are family. Uh, even the angels are family. Everything is family. We are his children. Um, it's all a family unit. And on this earth, the basis even of communities' life uh, as human beings is a family life. Now people can make the family their god, they can make it their idol, and often in churches this is what happens. And it, and it, and it makes you lazy and depraved in spiritual content and power, uh, so that you do not follow Jesus in his ministry, but you just focus on the family. That's wrong, but it's vitally necessary for us to have godly habits with our families as well as anything else. Um, we are told to live godly life, to be clean, to be pure towards sisters in, in the body of Christ, to treat older women as mothers, to treat um, older men as fathers, and not to rebuke them, but to encourage them. And uh, there are so many things that the Western world has lost. Values, godly habits, godly values. We've thought in our pride that because we knew science and some smattering of technology that we can throw away what God has always counted as very, very important, and that is the values, family values, um, healthy values, keeping your body clean, your mind clean, your spirit clean, keeping yourself uh, in, in a godly way of life. Um, tithing, giving offerings, doing whatever is right in your local church and to the kingdom of heaven and to the people of this earth. 
And though they get judged and are thrown into judgment, our attitudes must be right. Jesus said, forgive and you'll be forgiven. He did not say, you'll be forgiven if you, for, if you don't forgive. Bitterness, anger, poison the soul. Um, hatred, malice, poison the soul. All these things. The Bible spends a long time dealing with these things so that you might be healed in your soul man, uh, in your mind, as well as in your body. Healing the character, very important. Divine healing comes with words. Words heal your character. Now, we have to change our lifestyles. Um, look, look at the divorce rate in the West. Look at the, look at the breakdown. Look, look at how sons and daughters treat and talk to their parents. And that's promoted by the parents. And the, the current spirit of liberalism has inhabited the churches. And this is very, very wrong. Uh, women are taught to be the same as men in church, whereas the Bible tells you quite clearly that they should be quiet and not lead men. Okay, uh, yet, uh, yet uh, we found a better way of doing it. What, what kind of, of arrogance is this? What kind of uh, malice towards God and His ways is this? This is a terrible thing that has happened. Uh, women do not respect their husbands anymore because they're treated and uh, they're taught to compete with them and to have ambitions even in spiritual life, to, to, to supersede them as if it was some kind of business, as if it was some kind of race in the Olympics, or something to do with that. It makes the women hard. It makes them to do things that their nature is appalled at, and that they're not happy once married with their husbands when they despise their husbands because they're competing with them. They, they're not happy. How can they be happy? They're not made to be like that. They're made to be submissive to their husbands and let him do the fighting, protecting, and providing, not themselves. This is what uh, godly happens. Uh, it, this is what was made after the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden, we have not yet broken the curse of death. And that's the last curse to be broken, but and that was the Garden of Eden curse. It, it's only the condemnation of the law, Moses' law, that, that is broken. We now no longer have that condemnation the written law has been nailed to the cross. So, uh, you know, the curse of, of w men having to work hard by the sweat of their brow and women giving uh, ch childbirth with pain and suffering, uh, these curses still remain and that we have to physically die. And then the judgment, these curses still remain upon us. Godly habits. Treat your neighbors right. Uh, reach out in love to people. Keep clean habits, clean bodies, clean minds, clean spirits. Very respectful to one another. Say, sir, I, you know, I made my children call me sir until they grew up. You see, uh, all the children around are calling their fathers by their first name. What, what kind of disaster is this? You see, no respect for pastors, no respect for politicians and leaders, no respect for police people, no respect for respectable people. The, the qualifications of elders and deacons are to manage your family well and not to have them as drunkards in, under your roof. Uh, to, they must respect you, and if they can't, then you can't gain respect in the body of Christ. It's as simple as that. If you can't manage your own family, how can you manage the body of Christ? So we have to challenge our, our children, even our, our wives, to stay in order and, and because we are the leaders of our family, you see, and they must respect us. And if you can't get your children and wives to respect you, then there's no way you can get the Church of God to respect you. Uh, and we, as fathers, must lead in this uh, issue of respect. And it's a disaster what has happened in the West. It is far worse than communism or any other ism uh, uh, because it's so subtle we do not realize that it's happening, but it's destroyed the family unit and destroyed so many of our values and godly habits. And the Bible tells us that godliness profits us now and in the life to come. Let's get healed. Let's get healed, body, mind, and soul, all of us, not just part of us. God bless you.